Hey guys, my name is Connor Ivanchuk and I'm here with a Canadian fishing video. I just joined the channel and this is the first video I'll be making. It's called Modifying Texas Rigs. Everybody knows what a Texas rig is. Basically you have your line, a bullet sinker, a worm hook, and your favorite soft plastic bait. I've been fishing Texas rigs for a long time, longer than I can remember, and it's probably the first thing I started out fishing with. But I found a problem with them. I've noticed that when it's moving through the water, the rig only moves one way, forward doesn't have any side to side action also when you're hitting it off, bouncing it off the bottom it sits on the bottom and there's a problem there because any debris around the bait here is going to get caught and it's going to catch the bait and you have a, there's a chance of you breaking off also it doesn't move through vegetation very well this summer I came up with an idea and I later found out that it's also been produced by owner tackle and it's called a jig rig well that's what owner calls it but I just call it my rig because it's my go-to rig when I want to fish Texas baits, or Texas rigs. So, I've decided to share with you guys how to per modify your Texas rig to make the bait move more freely, keep the bait off the bottom, and help it move through vegetation more easily. So here on the table in front of me is a regular Texas rig. Bullet weight, line, that's tied to a worm hook with a soft plastic worm on it. I'm going to keep this here so you can see the different changes that I've made in my rig that differ from this regular one. So first off, you need three things. You need your Texas rig hook. I usually like to use four out hooks because they're big enough that I can fit the split ring through. And the second thing you need are the split rings. You need two of them. And the third thing you need is a drop shot pencil weight, like this one. Also, I like to have an extra hook around because when I'm making this rig out when I'm fishing, I need something to open the split rings with. And the reason why I keep this extra hook around is so I can, for I don't know if you can see this here, if I can force it through the split rings and I can open the ring like that. So what you do first, open your ring. I'm going to open it on this side so it's easier to put through the eye. That. You gotta be careful with these split rings because they like to pop off sometimes. Very, very easy to lose. Right there. So now I have my first ring started on the hook. Take it, slide it on. So, okay, there we go. So now that the first split ring is on the hook, I put the second one on. Now we take this again and open up the ring and then slide it on to the second ring or the first ring that we put on the hook. So the first ring goes on to the hook, the second ring goes on to the first ring. Alright, so. There's the hook, there's the first ring, and there's the second ring. The reason why I use two rings is because there's more movement allowed with two rings than there is with one. So the next thing I do, I take my pencil weight. And most pencil weights are pinched at the top, so when you put your line through the small opening in the bottom and pull it up, you pinch the line so it doesn't, so it holds the drop shot weight in place, and if it gets caught in rocks in the bottom, pull your line out, don't break off. What I like to do is stick my hook in there, the hook that I used to open the to open the um, uh, split rings, and I like to use an old hook because I don't want to make this one dull, and this one is dull because it's an old hook. And then I force it up, wiggle it around, and I make the opening on the top here much wider than it was before. The reason why I do that is so I can fit the ring through, and so instead of having the ring through here and have all this extra metal up top. I'm going to have the ring through here. Well, if you can see that, there you yeah, here. So that it's allowed to move more freely. So I'm going to open up the second ring. It's a little hard there, it popped off. Open up the second ring, 
slide my pencil weight on. There. Slide my pencil right on, and there you have it, a jig rig. And the last thing you have to do is put on a soft plastic worm, or any other kind of bait you like to fish soft plastics on a Texas rig. Right here with me that I have now is a KVD Perfect Plastic 7 inch. And I like these baits on the jig rig because they're really light. And the lighter the bait, the better because the longer it will stay, will keep itself from falling off the bottom. Like if you have a heavy plastic, it's gonna auto, it's gonna when it falls, it's gonna fall with the weight. The weight's heavier, so the weight's gonna pull it down, and it's gonna slowly fall down. Especially with this concave tail, this concave tail, sorry, here. Air pocket holds water and the tail falls faster than the front of the bait does. So there you have it. A traditional Texas rig versus a homemade jig rig. So in conclusion, we've taken a regular Texas rig and modified it to make ourselves a jig rig. Once again, the benefits of a jig rig. It has more action from left to right. It doesn't sit on the bottom, the nose of the bait so it's less likely to get caught up and to snag and less likely for you to break off your line and it moves through weeds easier. I really hope you guys enjoyed my first video on how to make the jig rig. Right here is a list of materials if you want to pause the video so you can write them down that you can go out and grab from your local tackle shop to make your own jig rig. From all of us here at Canadian Fishing Video, we really appreciate you guys taking a chance to look at our videos. Please remember to comment, subscribe, and like the video. Also, if you want to hear more, of it, hear more from us, Follow us on Twitter at MattMaddox15, Fizari11, and Connor I. From everyone here at Canadian Fishing Video, have a good one, guys.